Hey everyone and welcome to another part so let's begin. This chapter gets a little dark so here's your warning. Momo wanted to pull her own hair out. The water distribution plant was slowly getting under control. The entire western district had gone up with every alarm possible only for them to be fake. But the worst part was the absolute destruction and fire in the southern district. Now while Momo's confidence had grown throughout the year this was absolutely too much. She couldn't get into contact with her leader so she had to have everyone check on the explosion. Sitting down in the surveillance room Momo checked through the cameras as the rest of her team had finally found Bakugu getting mobbed by civilians. Setting her head down Momo just couldn't believe her position. This is insane. Midoriya shouldn't have caused this much trouble. She wished she hadn't listened to the classes and actually prepared. Hey, yeah Momo are you okay? Turning her head Momo saw Mina coming in with a cup of tea. They hadn't had any trouble at the HQ since the fires were extinguished. I'm fine Mina just tired. Where is Kosai-san? He's guarding the hole in the tower I just thought I should bring you some tea. Setting down the mug next to Momo, Mina sat down on the surveillance room table looking at the cameras. See anything? No, I hadn't spotted Midoriya once. I don't understand how he can avoid every camera in the city. It's alright girl, you'll find him. It's barely reaching sundown. Looking through the cameras both girls saw the horizon barely setting. Sighing Momo smiled it really helped that Mina could keep her cheeriness up. Thanks, Mina. MMMHMM. Smiling brightly Mina swayed her legs when she spoke some more. So yeah Momo what do you think about Midori after all of this? I don't know how to answer that. On one hand, I fear him but on the other, the stuttering boy from the first day comes back to mind. What he has done is strange. He broke Ibarra. She's still sitting in her room. Propping her head Momo saw Mina jump off the desk before facing her. Yeah, but it'll be okay. I'm sure Midori is just doing this for the game. But if I knew he was this smart to plan all this I would have trained harder. Smiling at each other a cold chill settled in the room and they froze as another voice entered the room. Thank you Ashido I deeply appreciate your kind words. It's a relief to hear that from someone so naive. Slowly turning Momo and Mina saw Lucifer walking into the room tightening the glove on his hand and wiping some blood off his face. Before they could react Mina's head was wrapped in a black substance before Lucifer yanked his arm down sending Mina into the surveillance room controls causing a shortage to erupt and Mina to go limp as the cameras all cut to black destroyed. Jumping out of her chair Momo created a staff she had never seen something like that before and Lucifer was the one who had it. S Momo couldn't even get a single word out as Lucifer quirk activated grabbed her by the mouth hitting the staff out of her hand before he slammed her head into the desk stunning Momo as her vision became blurred for a minute. Did you really try and tell me to stop? How incompetent are you? Leaning in Lucifer's face was right in front of Momo's as he grinned under his mask, taunting Momo's insecurity. Though Momo didn't give up instead she bit down on Lucifer's hand trying to escape, though her bite did little but have Lucifer bang her head into the desk again. Do it again I dare you. Glaring right into Momo's eyes Lucifer saw the girl freeze again. Trying to speak Momo's voice was muffled until Lucifer let go but gripped her neck and with his grip, Momo had a hard time speaking. H how did you get in? Act choking Momo's eyes stung with tears as Lucifer lifted her up. It was quite simple. Kosai was the last person you should have had guarded. So easy to strike a deal isn't that right Kosai? At the entrance of the room, Kosai walked in grinning. Oh you know Lucifer it's time for your end of the deal. Seeing that Momo was confused and shocked Lucifer brought her to the floor where only the tips of her toes touched the ground. Oh, you don't know. Well, let me explain something about Kosai here. Kosai Tsuburaba Hiro a student in class 1b. Despite his personality of being competitive and enthusiastic he often found himself being quite the pervert. Hell, he didn't think there wasn't any girl in or out of his class he wouldn't want to fuck. Though he kept this side of himself hidden, subtle not wanting to feed that own side of himself but it kept getting worse. The hero costumes not only the girls in his class wear but also his rival class one had only grown his frustration. In his dorm, he often pleasured himself to the fantasies his head came up with all surrounding the girls of UA. It mostly started with the joint training, though he had seen Class 1 before his mind didn't turn to them until his fight with Tsuyu. The way her tongue wrapped around him had more fantasies playing in his head. He already had sick fantasies about his own class, Setsuna using her quirk to pleasure him whenever he wanted. Kanoko getting high off of her own mushrooms while he broke her and more but there was a problem. He wasn't attractive enough nor did he have a powerful quirk so he knew there wasn't any chance he could get the girl's attention so he kept his fantasies to himself. With the war game, Kosai couldn't even find the time to be alone to relieve himself and working with the girls in close proximity, and with the distractions. His eyes always fell to their features, his urges growing more. Though only one person saw Kosai for who he truly was, Izuku Midoriya had seen through Kosai and into his hidden side. 
Having experienced betrayal from everyone he had introduced into his life he became accustomed to seeing everyone's true side especially after he was accused by his own friends and teachers. So really it was all a matter of when Izuku could use this in his favor, and that happened to be today. Hey, Kosai I'm going to check on Yamomo and get her a snack do you want anything? Mina jumping off the large piece of rubble she was sitting on looked at Kosai who was looking at her with the corner of his eye. No I'm fine thank you though, I have to keep watch can't let Lucifer get the jump on us. With a large grin Kosai looked back at the large hole in the wall. Smiling Mina spoke, okay then, let me know if you want anything. Turning around Mina walked out of the room unaware of the stare she was currently receiving. Kosai having heard Mina start walking turned his eyes going directly to Mina's ass. With the natural sway she walked with it only accentuated her feature which Kosai couldn't help but notice. Ashido's ass looks so big. Kosai always liked Mina's costume. It was skin tight like Uraraka's and Satsuna's but hers was more revealing. The window where he could see her cleavage and her movements. It got Kosai's mind running on overdrive. He imagined him over Mina as he pounded into her relentlessly. Oh he wished he could make that a reality. He only snapped out of his thoughts once a figure outlined in green was seen out of the corner of his eye trying to enter the room. Using his quirk Kosai solidified the air stopping the figure and boxing them and revealing a captured Lucifer. Smiling widely Kosai walked up to the box while Lucifer stood up still clad in his green lightning. Cautious Kosai took a defensive stance. He knew that Lucifer could potentially break out but it turned to confusion when nothing happened. Putting his hand to his earpiece Kosai was about to tell the entire hero team he had captured Lucifer when said villain raised his hand before shoving his fist through one of the air walls allowing his voice to be heard. Kosai I wouldn't do that if I were you. Unless of course, you want Yue to know of your secret souvenirs in your closet. Freezing Kosai looked at Lucifer, and with his focus off the air box, he had created it disappeared while Lucifer walked closer. I I don't know what you're talking about. H how does H he know? Kosai was panicking. How did Lucifer know of his secret? I know you fantasize not only of your own female classmates but also my own. I know of the panties and clothes you stole from their rooms when no one was there. I know who you really are. Getting face to face it felt as if Lucifer towered over Kosai. He was trapped paralyzed. If this got out nothing would be the same his life would be ruined. W what do you want? Kosai's competitive nature subsided his enthusiastic side cowered over the person who had control of his future. A deal. A deal. Yes a deal, you see I came here to obtain both Yairazu and Ibarra as they are essential to what is coming. I only want you to turn a blind eye and act as if this never occurred. And in return, I will not only incapacitate Mina and Yairazu but allow you to fulfill your fantasies with them however you please. Stunning the boy Lucifer saw flashing emotions cross his face before meekly he asked question. What about the teachers? The cameras? My secret? Please relax that is none of your concern. I won't tell a living soul about your secrets and I have someone working with me. She is interfering with the cameras. Nothing can be heard or seen you're completely safe. So take the deal, get what you want, and blame it on me no repercussions will come to you. Holding out his gloved hand Lucifer waited as Kosai was stuck in his thoughts. I I can be safe, he offering me a chance to do what I want. Kosai's inner thoughts were dark his perverted mind taking most of his logic and reason. This might be the only chance where he could get what he wanted and Lucifer's eyes showed nothing but the absolute truth. Slowly Kosai looked at Lucifer's hand before gripping it. It's a deal. Glad we can agree now take me to the surveillance room, and the deal will be official. Mounting his head Kosai led Lucifer out of the room, and by now Mina had just gotten to the surveillance room. Lucifer silently walking behind Kosai looked to a camera in the corner of the room nodding his head. Going up the stairs Kosai pointed to the door whispering. There is the entrance now hurry. Momo couldn't believe what she was just told, how Kosai could just betray them because he was promised pleasure in their sacrifice. Tearing up Momo watched Kosai walk forward his grin growing as he saw Mina's current position, knocked out and prostrated her head buried, and the thing he most fantasized about waiting. Momo started crying. If she tried to use her quirk sure she may have a chance but Lucifer's cold eyes made it clear that that chance was zero to none. H how could why you Midoriya? What goes around comes around. Your betrayal when I was accused led to this, now it's time for repayment. At this point Kosai finally arrived near Mina. Before he looked at Lucifer, she won't wake up right. No, and she won't have any recollection this happened nor will anyone know. What about Yeyarazu? I have a plan for her. She won't remember after I'm done. With absolute certainty in his voice, Lucifer enforced Kosai's faith in his plan. Reaching his hands out Kosai guided them to Mina's ass. As he got closer he couldn't believe he was going to touch her. He felt elation bubble up inside of him. He couldn't imagine what it would finally feel like. Just as his fingertips grazed Mina, Kosai was suddenly grabbed by the hair making him scream in pain before a knee found itself in his face. 
His nose breaking with a crunch and blood leaking out Kosai fell on the ground holding his injury. Looking he saw Lucifer stalking up to him. What about the deal? On the ground Kosai wriggled in pain while Lucifer took his pistol out. Deal? Don't you know? Never make a deal with the devil. Kicking Kosai in the face Lucifer saw the hero's head at the ground unconscious before he pulled the trigger emptying the entire magazine of blood bullets before an angry and disgusted Vlad voiced in his ear. Kosai Tsuburaba is out. That's right the teachers saw everything that happened not only that but May was recording the footage. Silence reigned before a meek crying voice spoke, M. Midoriya. Turning he saw Momo still crying though a hint of gratefulness on her face for him stopping Kosai. She thought Midoriya was actually going to let Kosai do what he wanted but she was proved wrong. The betrayal subject Midoriya mentioned was all a play to get her to believe the sham. Yeyarazu, your gratefulness is misplaced. I didn't stop Kosai because it was the right thing to do. I stopped him because I want Ashido to feel what I felt when I was accused, trapped, hated, powerless. Taking his pistol Lucifer hit Yeorazu knocking her out but not eliminating her as he walked out of the room and up the floors to the one other room he visited the previous night. Opening the door he saw Ibarra the vine girl now out of her cocoon laying in bed. With the door creaking Ibarra looked only to cower in fear. Lucifer was back and immediately she started to pray to mumble out to God so he could save her, her reality of Midoriya and Lucifer couldn't be distinguished. Closer her eyes she kept rambling. Please God deliver onto me your divine light. Save me from the damnation of Lucifer. Spare my life for I am nothing but your child. Please as stopping Ibarra felt someone's hands on top of hers. Opening her eyes slowly she saw Lucifer staring straight at her but unlike before when she saw only hate and anger there was nothing but concern. Ibarra was confused about how was she not dead now. Scanning the room she saw Momo unconscious and on the ground but quickly her head was turned back to face Lucifer. Standing up Lucifer kept Ibarra's eyes on him. Seeing the fear etched inside, Ibarra, you are a true apostle of God. Confusing the girl he removed his mask smiling. Ibarra, I know I am a devil. However before that night God spoke to me. He wanted me to test your faith and now you're being rewarded. I have accosted many sins throughout my lifetime. But with God's guidance I see his light. I tried to show your classmates the same divine light but they refused, attacking me giving in to their own sins. You have seen it yourself have you not? Ibarra immediately thought to her class and even won it. Their talks of premarital relations, lust, wrath, greed, every sin she could imagine resonated with her classmates but wasn't Lucifer just the same. Her mind was too broken to piece everything correctly but she voiced her thought, aren't you the s same? You've committed sins yourself. For the first time, she saw genuine guilt wash over the devil's face probably the only time she might see it. Yes I was, I admired God so much I wanted to be him. My pride consumed me, but you Ibarra showed me not only that night but in the day as well God's light was the true path, the right path. Please come with me Ibarra, you can teach me more. I believe God has sent you to guide me back to his forgiveness, and maybe perhaps I could show you who your classmates truly are, along with their sins. Holding his hand out Lucifer leaned down his left eye glowing. Ibarra stared at Lucifer's hand. Though he was the devil and committed sins he looked repentant, willing to do anything for God's forgiveness she could see it in his eyes, and his story of the heroes not taking his offer showed through the streak of. Ibarra stared at Lucifer's hand. Though he was the devil and committed sins he looked repentant, willing to do anything for God's forgiveness she could see it in his eyes, and his story of the heroes not taking his offer showed through the streak of blood on his face. Her classmates were sinful she could see it clearly. She thought she herself could change them but that proved difficult as they had made no move to purify themselves. What Lucifer said made total sense. Her faith was tested that night, and her prayers for her to survive had been given truth as she was still alive. Finally here was a chance to know more about the true face of her classmates those she called friends and if what Lucifer had said is true they could save her friends from damnation. Grabbing Lucifer's hand Ibarra was pulled on her feet and after Lucifer grabbed Momo he escorted her out of the hero tower. He had to get Ibarra to May so he could have another force in his power. While he got Momo into the villain lair. After that he had to clean up the hero team just taking out Kosai wouldn't be enough if he wanted to win blood would have to be shed. W why can't I breathe? W what are they yelling about? I I feel my skin, my hair, why doesn't it feel real? Katsuki Bakugu couldn't understand what was happening to him. He was dominated in a fight by that stupid useless Deku. And now people were crowding him. He felt closed in. He couldn't activate his quirk. He couldn't do anything. What he didn't know was that he was experiencing his first ever panic attack. An intense one at that. His thoughts were all jumbled up and his anxiety was through the roof. Izuku had experienced this exact same thing every day of his life though Bakugu hadn't and he couldn't stand it. Why did you kill my family? You murderer. I quote LL kill you. You're a freak. A monster. Robots and real civilians surrounded Bakugu screaming, sobbing, distraught. 
cameras and phones in their hands the bright lights of their flash blinding Bakugu. His nerves getting at him Bakugu was a sweating mess, his eyes frantic, the device on his chest shocking him every time he tried to use his quirk to get the crowd away from him. M murderer am my hero. L Lucifer did this. Yelling he tried to push robots and people back. Liar we saw the entire thing my daughter was killed because of you. If you had not shown up she would still be alive. A lone robot screamed this out its peers hearing him. With its functionality, it rushed Baku striking the boy to the floor with its metal arm before it was restrained. Shut the fuck up. Your daughter should not have been in the way. Making it worse for himself Bakugu his mind racing said what first popped up in his head but that only had the civilians angry, shocked, and in disbelief, everything was being recorded and that was the final straw. Both students and robots alike attacked Bakugu forcing the blonde-haired boy to fight back though without his quirk he had to rely on physical power. That in itself was another problem the fact he was quirkless now had him scared. He shouldn't be powerless he was Katsuki Bakugu the future number one hero but then Izuku's smile came back to mind along with his words. Enjoy being quirkless Kachin, it's quite the life, you'll see. Was this how that shitty nerd felt growing up? No, he was just weak. That's why I had to show him his place. Auntie and Ko knew it as well that's why she did it too. I'm right everyone can see that. I'm the stronger one here. Quirkless or not that fucking Deku will die. Punching a robot in the face Bakugu kept trying to fight his only thoughts were to show that even without his quirk he was stronger, that he was better. The numbers only grew as he fought. Every screen in and out of the mock city had only one thing, his massacre of countless civilians, his irresponsibility, his lack of care for those he was supposed to protect, and his fighting. The faith the civilians had about the hero team was replaced. They were devils. The angel Lucifer was their true savior. Ground Zero Finally arriving the bruised and bloody Bakugu saw the extras he had on his team finally show up, controlling the crowd. The only reason the cops hadn't arrived was of because the Western District alarms. Hiroshima was the first to pick up Bakugu putting his friend's arm around his shoulder before hardening his body, glass bottles and rocks rain. Trying all in vain to strike Bakugu as the others covered him all confused on why the civilians have turned on them. Creati. We have Bakugu but the civilians are trying to attack him. Do you have any sign of Lucifer? Creati. Creati. Something was in the atmosphere. Kirishima moving looked at his team who heard his desperate pleas for their coordinator to help but no one answered just static. Trying again Kirishima felt a knot in his stomach. Pinky. Pinky. Eris. Anyone. The heroes were well they couldn't describe it other than nauseous. Afraid. Curious. But one thing was for sure their body felt heavier. Yuraka however was the first to snap out of it. Guys we need to get back you go to the hero tower and check on the others. Trying to take control Yuraka without her helmet protecting her was struck in the head with a glass bottle, a gash appearing, and the others who didn't have a quirk that boosted their physical prowess weren't doing well either. Breathing through her teeth in pain, sirens were finally heard cops and firefighters had finally arrived and with them, the feeling of heat was finally felt as rows of buildings were on fire. What happened here? Using his quirk Todoroki arrived sliding in on ice he looked at the civilians rioting the police and his classmates trying to restrain them and finally a beaten and bloody Bakugu. Shoto, stop the fires. Kendo yelled at the dual-powered hero as she pushed back more civilians with her enlarged hands taking care as to not harm them. Listening, Shoto looked at the buildings. The firefighters were already trying to control the flames but to Shoto, there was clear there wouldn't be any survivors. Placing his foot on the ground Todoroki prepared himself before a single large iceberg erupted covering the fire-encased buildings while his right side quickly froze. The drawback of his quirk hitting hard as it was the largest ice structure he had created as it threatened to reach the tip of the mock city. Using his left side he melted the ice on his right trying to get his body temperature back to normal. With that done it was now time to escort Bakugu to the hero HQ and check on the others they still hadn't responded no matter how many times they were contacted. Pushing through the crowd of mobbing civilians, Tetsu Tetsu, Monoma who copied his quirk, Kirishima, Takoyami, Shishida, and Kendo protected their classmates with their quirks. Their physical abilities stopping most of the items thrown at them while some of the police helped, others just watched their family were some included in Bakugu's attack. That fucking Deku, once I find him I'll murder him. He'll know his place, quirkless ha don't make me fucking laugh, I'll still kick his ass. Bakugu rambled on as Ida supported him having taken over Kirishima's position. Hearing his team leader say that about his friend Ida grit his teeth holding his tongue. Despite what Izuku had done so far in the game it gave Baku no reason to insult his friend. Eventually, they reached the hero HQ though it was oddly silent. No lights were turned on. No noise. Nothing instead of feeling a sense of safety it felt they were walking into a den of wolves. It sure as hell didn't help that civilians were still following them yelling obscenities constantly claiming they wanted justice. 
but it still didn't answer their question of why they were specifically targeting Bakugou sure he was hard to deal with. But for not only robots, but real students to do so was confusing. Opening the door to the hero building they placed Bakugou on the couch before Kendo pointed down the hall. All right, Ida takes Sen and Bondo to the hole check if Kosai is there, and seal the hole in the wall before the civilians get any ideas. Yuraraka Yu, Tsu, Siro, and Shoji look for Yeyarazu. And Ashido, the rest of you stay here with Bakugo I'll check on Ibarra. Go. Following Kendo's leadership the ones she pointed out got to their jobs while she herself went to check on Ibarra. Ida was deeply conflicted as he, Bondo, and Sen ran to the large hole. Izuku, is this what you can really do? Is this just for the game or is it more? Ida couldn't wrap his head around his friend's actions. Ida had grown a lot through the year being able to see if someone was silently in need but Izuku never showed any sign, or rather he hid it so well it didn't notice. Getting to the holes Ida stopped his thoughts as he hadn't been able to get a good look at them that evening but he couldn't focus on it. Bondo-san please use your glue to cover up the walls. Bondo nodded before he looked at Sen. Sen could you drill small holes in the wall so the glue can have reinforcement with the surrounding walls? Sure thing. Despite the current situation, Sen was calm despite having his friend shot in front of him he had to keep his head on straight he couldn't let it affect him when Lucifer was still out there. Activating his quirk Sen had his arms become drill-like before he started punching holes where Bondo instructed. Thank you now let's get this hole sealed up. Spitting out a large amount of glue Bondo, weaved his glue through the supporting walls before he started covering up the main problems and controlling the rate his glue dried the wall instantly hardened covering it up. It's sealed but the glue isn't very strong a few large impacts and it will be destroyed. Thank you both I appreciate the help. Bowing Ada thanked the class 1B students before they went back to the common area. They were waiting for the rest of their classmates when Yuraraka and Tsu came down the stairs, but with an unconscious Mina, the pink-skinned girl's arms draping over the both of their shoulders. That wasn't it however as pieces of material were stuck in the poor girl's face along with dried blood and burn marks. Ada helping them took Mina to the couch before setting the girl down. Silence was the only thing heard in the room before Tsu spoke. She was unconscious when we found her. She's not eliminated but Kosai wasn't so lucky he's knocked out with a broken nose and dislocated jaw ribbit Lucifer shot him he's dead. Ribbit and we couldn't find Yamomo. I think Lucifer has her. Sighing the entire class sat down in the common room. Some of the students put their faces in their hands. Everything was chaos. Civilians were rioting aiming for Bakuga's head. They were dirty and hurt their medical supplies were already destroyed along with some of their hero gear. They couldn't take a shower as the water was barely running causing them to have to conserve as much water as they can. Another member was dead, one captured it was too much. Gyro crossing her arms looked at the girls, where's Siro and Shoji. They're checking on Kendo she still hasn't come down. Iroraka answering turned back to Mina as Hagakure picked the small sharp fragments from her best friend's face. How could Midoriya do something like this? Hagakure slowly made sure no discomfort came to her friend as she tried to clean her up but no one had an answer to her question. It was quiet but Kirishima looking at Bakugu and more importantly the device on his chest, the Cobra. Why did the civilians attack you and what is that thing on your chest is that from Lucifer? Turning everyone looked at the injured blonde who only glared. I don't know why those shitty civilians were attacking me. And that piece of shit put this thing on my chest, saying some bullshit that I'm now quirkless. Yelling out Bakugu sat up his body protesting as he once again grabbed the disc trying to blow it up but nothing came out instead Bakugu grit his teeth in pain as he hunched forward. Everyone on the hero team watched. They thought Bakugu was playing around but he wasn't the joking type and slowly their eyes became wide. You're really quirkless now aren't you? Kodai missing pieces of her gear bluntly stated the obvious angering her leader. Shut the fuck up. I can't be one of those shitty quirkless waste of space. I'd rather kill myself than be one of them. Tearing at the device Katsuki ignored the stares his team was giving them until Yuraraka had enough. Walking she punched Katsuki to the ground. One of them. What's that supposed to mean? Izuku was quirkless too. Yelling Yuraraka had to be held back. The video Izuku had shown on the first day was making so much more sense each minute she spent near Bakugu. The bullying that was clear. The hatred Bakugu had for Izuku. His condition pre-UA with everybody including his own mother she finally realized who Izuku's tormentor was. It was you wasn't it? The one who told Izuku to kill himself. That's why he said that at the end it was you. Pointing tears streamed down Yuraraka's eye. Her outburst started resonating with the rest of the heroes. Jumping in Bakugu defense Kirishima hardened his body before standing in front of Bakugu. Hey. We can't fight guys. Bakubro couldn't have done it. He wouldn't. No one really bought into Kirishima's defense however as Ajiro walked forward tail at the ready. Kirishima, you can't seriously believe that. Midoriya wouldn't lie and Bakugu clearly hates him. Fucking Deku. Useless piece of shit. 
Doesn't that sound like what a bully would say? Hiroshima faltered at this, but he stood fast. But Kubro calls me shitty hair and everyone nicknames. H he just says that to Midoriya, as a joke. Are you kidding me Kirishima how far are you going to die? Guys what hell is going on here? Cutting the entire conversation off and unintentionally saving Kirishima Siro spoke coming down the stairs with Kendo and Shoji but there was no sign of Ibarra. Kendo, Ibarra still in room. With her broken Japanese pony looked at her class president seeing her shake her head. Ibarra is gone. There wasn't any sign of a struggle in her room, so either Lucifer took her or she left the HQ at some point. Kendo put a hand over her forehead pushing some stray hairs out of the way. So what's happening here? Catching Kendo up with the current events including Minas and Bakugu's condition, Kosai's elimination, Yeirazu's abduction, and finally the argument they were having before she came. Turning Kendo glared at Bakugu with him quirkless they would need a new leader. And it seems right now, but that was only the surface of the issue. Turning to the others and more specifically Yuraka Kendo spoke Tetsu Tetsu backing her up. Everon we will deal with this after the game. First we need to know what caused the civilians to riot. And figure out Lucifer's next move. Yeah if we fight now Lucifer will pick us off like nothing. Calming everyone down they all agreed though their thinking of Bakugu was extremely strained and they already looked to Kendo to be their new leader. With what they had recovered everyone started getting patched up. Bakugu, Yuraka, Mina, and everyone else who was hurt during the riot. Holding her blood-soaked bandage Yuraka pulled her knees up as she sat on the couch next to Mina who was still knocked out. So much has happened and they were only two days in. Yuraka wished she had picked Izuku's side from the beginning. It was stupid of her. She loved Izuku and him her so why didn't she join that day? Fear, morals, or was she just too stupid enough to not think this could happen when she had seen villains like the low? V and AFO up close. All around people were doing many different things trying to rest yet they kept their guard up even as Kendo started giving out orders. All right everyone. We need to keep our patrol routes throughout the night. Different patrols will be taking shifts. So while some of us rest others will patrol the city, we can't keep letting Lucifer catch us unexpected. The heroes all nodded except for Bakugu who was currently in his room resting while trying to get the disc off his chest. For the patrols, we need to lay out some ground rules. Everyone will watch each other's backs and never separate. That's how he got Sato during the first day, and that's how he has been picking us off. With that everyone saw what Kendo was telling was the truth. The whole time they were in this game they were playing catch up, being led around like cattle for the slaughter so they need to be on the offensive. Next if someone sees Lucifer you report right away. The other patrol squads will back you up immediately we have to stop Lucifer now when only have half a day's rations. And without Yeirazu it makes it even harder. Does everybody understand? Everyone nodded their heads. They were glad Kendo took control. They felt they had a chance instead of just being yelled at. Kendo formed a plan that may work in their favor. Going into deeper detail Kendo set up the patrols each one covering the weakness of another member and complementing each other's quirks. The first squad was Takoyami, Kiruwaro, Shinzo, and Shishida. The second patrol was agreed to be Ayama, Ida, Ajiro, and Shouji. The rest will alternate between those who rest and don't. Setting up the patrols Kendo looked at the time seeing it was nearly 8 p.m. And not knowing when Lucifer will strike she decided it would be best for them all to rest and check the news, the station having recovered from the first day. Turning on the TV they were met with a regular news channel, a new anchor and what she assumed was a new crew. Taking a seat she turned the volume up as the anchor cleared his throat. Are the heroes really the saviors they make themselves out to be? Today they didn't show it. Ground Zero from our information the leader of the heroes who had recently moved into the city took the lives of many. At approximately 4 p.m. the southern district of our city was destroyed by Ground Zero in a fight he had with the proclaimed villain Lucifer, though many people are now calling that same villain our true savior. Here with us, we have footage from recordings taken at the time of the fight. The images and video about to be displayed some may find disturbing. Cutting the screen cut to a handheld video of Lucifer's and Ground Zero's fight. The destruction Bakugu did just to hit Lucifer, the civilians he murdered in cold blood while screaming out die without a care. The heroes just stared at the screen the reason why the civilians had turned on them. They kept watching as Lucifer stood up against Bakugu yelling how he was going to give up to stop the bloodshed, when Bakugu did an attack that they were certain would have killed Izuku had he been hit. After that the fight kept going on and the heroes just stayed silent Lucifer was quickly becoming an idol one that rivaled All Might in this city. He wasn't just a symbol of hope and justice, but the truth as well. After the clips ended it cut back to the anchor who looked visibly worn out as if watching the video had been hard for him. T that was, sigh hard. We now have our field reporter Satsuki Mamoi, who is currently at the site of the catastrophe. Once again the footage went to another camera showing off a pink-eyed and haired girl wearing a news reporter uniform. 
Thank you, Mitamora. This is something that affects us all. Everyone in the community and out of the Southern District has come together in a time of mourning. The amount of losses hasn't been determined. However, those who lost their lives today did so due to the hands of one of this city's heroes. Turning Mamoy and the cameraman scanned over the people. There were candles set up for everyone who was lost, sobbing students and robots all around. Walking up to a female student, Mamoy crouched down placing her hand on the shoulder of the woman. Hello, we're with MCG News, and if it's not any trouble we would like to ask you a few questions. Nodding her head the female student got up with Mamoy before facing the camera visible tears on her face. Now why are you here? And my family was in the ad attack, and my little brother W was killed, H he had just turned 6 years old. Breaking down the woman sobbed heavily, and Mamoy rushed the woman pulling her into a hug comforting her until the woman's sobs quieted down. I apologize if that was too much. Is there anything you would like to say to the heroes watching now? Nodding her head the female student grabbed the microphone looking straight into the camera. H heroes if you're watching, get out of our city dot 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 you caused this. Yes, they did. The new voice came from behind the cameraman. Mamoy, and the woman had spotted the speaker gasp dropping the microphone on the ground. More and more civilians having heard their gasps also turned around only to freeze. Quickly the cameraman whirled around only to freeze like everyone else. Walking forward Lucifer his head bandaged walked with a candle in his hand. While a woman walked with him cloaked in pure white the lights from the street lamps falling over the woman as her green vine hair flowed behind her, roses braided seemingly with it. The heroes went wide-eyed and the only one to speak was Kendo, Ayaibara. Walking out of the hero HQ Lucifer kept Momo wrapped in black whip while he walked with Ibarra. Getting some distance away from the hero building he stopped causing Ibarra to look at him. Holding his hand out Lucifer activated OFA the small of the ozone invading Ibarra's senses. Come hold on to me. It will be faster. Listening Ibarra grabbed onto Lucifer's suit while he held her shoulder his other hand controlling black whip which brought Momo into a tighter grip. Using full cowl at 10% Lucifer jumped to the nearest rooftop before running across and into the eastern district where his apartment and May were waiting. As he jumped from building to building making sure Ibarra nor Momo would fall Lucifer let his thoughts go and specifically to the rule he discussed with Nezu. Finally what if a hero kills another hero? As for the hero killing another hero, the one who had done the killing would be disqualified. The rule book never said anything about a hero becoming a villain, so that rule won't apply if this goes right. Looking out of the corner of his eyes Lucifer focused on Ibarra who was deep in thought. Looking forward he spotted his apartment building and quickly he entered through the roof entrance and after making sure no one can spot him and Ibarra he went to his floor before using a key to open the hopefully locked door he told May to do so. Izuku, you're back. Spinning around in a chair May smiled as Izuku entered the door with Ibarra and Momo closing the door. Yep I'm back and we have a guest. Please Ibarra think of this as your own home. Gesturing to the apartment as a whole Ibarra gave a small smile and a nod before going over to the couch sitting down. Izuku on the other hand released Black Whip before taking out a roll of capture wire tying Momo up before he placed her on the ground. Looking up he immediately saw Mei at the couch speaking with Ibarra though Mei has her own eccentric way of speaking it seems she and Ibarra were getting along with each other. Izuku had already given Mei a heads up about how Ibarra was and she took the information in stride, though she was a bit unhappy at the fact they couldn't show much affection. Leaving them Izuku walked into his room. It was barely reaching 5.30pm as his alarm clock told him so and he had a lot of things to do. But first, it was to make sure he was ready for tonight. Grabbing his painkillers he took his mask off before taking two stopping the stinging. And the headache he was dealing with having sent himself through several walls with OFA and to make sure his nerves wouldn't start hurting. Walking out of his room he saw Mei taking Ibarra over to her computer before pulling up several video files. Smiling he started taking his suit and gloves off leaving his pants and undershirt on. Cracking his neck and fingers Izuku sat on the couch before Mei sat next to him her putting her face close to his as her eyes scanned him. You know I watched your fight. Did you really have to throw yourself through several different walls? It was all a part of the act. I didn't do it because I wanted to. Laying his head back Izuku felt Mei's hand on his chest. Well now we have to cover up that head wound. It's still bleeding and taking your painkillers won't just cut it. Yes ma'am, in a playful voice Izuku felt may get up before rummaging around in the supplies Nezu had given him before she returned with disinfectant, gauze, and a rag. Slowly may began cleaning his wound with the disinfectant and rag before she put a bandage on his head wrapping it around with gauze. Throughout this entire process, Izuku kept his eyes on May. Though he may have manipulated and done horrible things to people just two days in the game she's still sticking by him. Smiling slightly his eyes turned back to the table watching as Ibarra was reacting to the videos, her hearing consumed by headphones. 
He watched as she was in a state of utter disbelief and shock before it switched to anger, sadness, disgust, and many more. Looks like the videos worked. Yep, I did a little editing while you were coming. By the way, I have some babies I need to show you but I need your gloves and mask. Standing up May without permission just grabbed said items before walking over to the table passing Ibarra before grabbing some tools. I guess I don't get a say in, do I? I hope they don't explode. Whispering that to himself he saw May quickly get to work. Laying his head back down he stretched his limbs he never knew Black Whip could put such a strain on his arm. I got to see if May can do something about that. But that's later now I need to cement my reputation while the recordings of Bakugu's fight with me and his indiscriminate killing already has me in good eyes. Visiting the morning site with someone as angelic as Ibarra would do so much more for the public eye and her faith in what we are doing is right. After all that is an essential part of being a hero. What are you thinking? Snapping his head back up he saw May oil stains on her face and her goggles down. Just thinking about visiting the memorial service the public will have. After all, after every major catastrophe the people always come together. And doing so as a devil with an angel is stronger than anything I can imagine. Anyways are you done with modifying my gear? Well first that's smart but my babies that I'm adding to your gear are going to need a few adjustments before they're ready. Rubbing her head May smiled. Well I'm sure you'll do it. But I need you to work with Ibarra to make her villain costume angelic she'll need it for tonight also add some protection I'm sure there will be a fight tonight. I'll need it done before 8 p.m. Sure thing but what am I getting as a reward? Crossing her arms May puffed out her cheeks before she was pulled into Izuku's lap. Kissing May Izuku deepened it and May flowed with it until she remembered who was in the room with her. I Izuku s stop MHMI Ibarra is our rigged there. Trying to stop her moans May was suddenly released by Izuku who was grinning at her while her face burned up. Was that good enough? Smirking he felt May hit his chest before standing up. Why yes. Walking off to the babies May sat down her blush under control as she got to work. While Izuku chuckled, it seemed only he could do that to the oh-so-blunt and eccentric May Hatsu. After sitting for a few minutes Izuku got up from the couch before walking over to Momo and hauling the girl onto his shoulder. I'm going to take Yeyarazu to the villain lair. It'll be back before it's time. Nodding her head May got back to work while Ibarra watched the videos over and over not even noticing. Leaving his apartment Izuku adjusted the gauze covering the right side of his forehead and his grip on Momo before exiting through the roof. Momo was the third victim to enter the villain lair. The question is how would she be leaving? With ectoplasm and a bullet of fake blood? Or free and an ally only time will tell hell Izuku still had five days. Setting Momo down Izuku sat back in the villain lair. He had just gotten here and Momo still hadn't woken up. I thought her insecurities were her weakness turns out the butt of a gun is as well. Izuku didn't mind she was still unconscious hell it made it easier for him. The wire he wrapped her body with was durable, and he had already taken her earpiece out so there wasn't a way she could contact the hero team. Missing his mask and gloves Izuku inspected his tattoo before he activated Black Whip the tattoo glowing black outlined in green. Manipulating it Izuku had time to kill so he quickly switched hands of which Black Whip appeared before he used it on both. Alternating he tried to extend it to other body parts. I can switch to every body part. But it needs refinement. The manipulation can't be too complex but I need to get better control. W what? W where am I? Wait Lucifer. Snapping out of his thoughts Izuku looked up to see Yeyarazu struggling with her binding as she tried to call out for help. Standing up he jumped down. Yeyarazu glad you're finally awake. Struggling on the ground Yeyarazu saw Izuku walk up to her and she stopped. She didn't know what Izuku would do but she spoke. What are you going to do? I merely came to offer you a choice you see. Sitting down Lucifer looked Yeyarazu in the eyes I need a little help. I need materials so that a colleague of mine can tinker and make stuff for me and you are the perfect person to provide such material. W why would I do anything for you? You hurt Mina and almost let Kosai touch her. You betrayed her trust my trust. Standing back up Lucifer kicked Yeyarazu in the stomach before he kneeled grabbing her face. Your trust. What about my trust? I helped you all countless times during school and out of it. Broke my body multiple times to save you and everybody, yet you act as if I betrayed your trust. Where was my support when I was accused? That's right there wasn't any. You all turned your back on me, like everyone else before had. Throwing her head back Lucifer ran a hand through his hair while Momo stayed silent. And Midori is right, I am vice rep. I promised to do my best for everyone B but I didn't help Midori. When he needed it the most, I we betrayed him first. He said he needed repayment. Momo's mind turned to the surveillance room Lucifer talking about what goes around comes around. Looking up she saw Izuku her classmate in a place stuck of rage and hatred and all she could do was stare down at the floor. Seeing her look down Izuku's rage-filled face disappeared. Sure their betrayal hurt him and he hates them for that but it wasn't the first time it has happened. So losing his cool over it wasn't going to occur. 
He promised that ever since he snapped at the teachers in the interrogation room. M. Murderia, I am sorry I should have helped you then, but what you're doing now is totally wrong. You're hurting our class, your friends. What about your Uraka? Yelling Momo tried to reason with Midoriya to try and get the boy from the beginning of the year back. Iirazu, if you help me, our friends and classmates won't need to get hurt any more than they need to for hurting me. Crouching down, Izuku tilted his head. Momo looked at her classmate in shock but her mind started going rapidly before she made a plan. I can alter some of the structure in the materials make them brittle or too weak. Whatever Midori makes it will be far too inefficient to work. Momo wasn't going to be a helpless damsel in distress not only can she make Izuku take it easier on her friends, but she will be introducing weaknesses with Izuku's plans and strengths. So Yeirazu have you made your choice. F fine will help you, but you have to promise me you won't hurt them badly just to eliminate them from the game. I promise, as long as you help I have no reason to drag the game out. Waiting Momo was grabbed by Izuku before being put in a sitting position against a rock as Izuku spoke. All right for now I need a sheet metal, steel, and approximately a school desk tall, thick, and wide. Explaining what he wanted Momo got to work. Okay, Momo changed the molecular base to cobalt. It will look the same but after a little pressure it can shatter like glass. Using her quirk a large metal sheet started appearing out of her arm slowly being drawn out. And before it could fully fall out and onto the ground, Izuku grabbed it holding it up. Perfect, see that wasn't so hard. And now you have to keep your promise. Looking Izuku dead in the eye Momo saw him stare down at her before he smiled. Of course, but there is one issue. Raising an eyebrow Momo was confused until the large piece of sheet metal she made struck her across the face at snapping in half, dazed she felt blood drip down her head. You're really horrible at hiding your true intentions. Well, you'll learn but I guess this means our friends will feel a little more pain all because of you. Ah, look at the time I have to get going. Walking off Izuku waved goodbye at Momo. Exiting the villain lair the night sky greeted him. He had to get back to the apartment soon he had to make an appearance. Activating full cowl he ran off. Walking into the apartment Izuku saw exactly what he had wanted and expected. Ibarra's hero costume had been altered. She looked as if she had descended from the heavens. An artificial light glowed giving her an even greater appearance accentuating the roses, but the main part of the costume looked reinforced. The light in the darkest of times. Oh Izuku you made it just on time. Ibarra's costume has been fixed and the babies I added to your gear are perfect. There's only a slight chance it will explode. Raising her arms up May wiped her sweat before giving a thumbs up to Izuku. What do you mean by slight chance? Here try your gloves on. Ignoring his question May grabbed the gloves shoving them into Izuku's hands who only shook his head putting them on. Though he failed to feel a difference, and he only noticed small notches that run from the knuckles to the fingertips that weren't there before. So what do these do? Well I was watching how you use your second quirk, and I thought of a baby, so you know how those guys who use puppets manipulate the strings of their figure to make it move, well I thought you could do the same. This baby flows your quirk through the notches on the gloves I had a feeling it works like your first quirk. Showing the notches in greater detail May's baby wanted to reduce the strain on Izuku's arm and give a greater detail of control, which were the main problems Izuku had been dealing with. Thank you, May, this is perfect. Seeing her smile Izuku too smiled before May ran back to the table and grabbed his mask. That's not all. Here, I upgraded this baby with a voice modulator as I did for that sleep-deprived kid's geek. Depending on how you want it can amplify your voice or change it entirely. I even put the voices you collected over the days in there as well. With a bright smile May saw Izuku put the mask on adjusting it before speaking though it wasn't his voice instead it was Bakugou's. Yep just like the voice I remember. Turning it off Izuku looked at the time before he looked at Ibarra. Ibarra it's almost time we give guidance to those who have lost their faith and hope are you ready? Seeing her nod her head Izuku knew there was one last thing he needed to do. Ibarra do you renounce the hero team? The false shepherds who lead our people astray, those whose sins vary in the many. Standing up straight Izuku's hand went behind his back gripping his pistol handle as he sized Ibarra up. Standing straight Ibarra looked into Lucifer's eyes I renounce the hero team. We, the true shepherds will lead the lamb to its herd. May the sinners who deeds are unredeemable cleanse their sins in the fires of hell. Smiling Izuku put his hand left his gun and to the earpiece in his right. The hero one in his left has been silent so far. Nezi you heard that right. Yes I did. Ibarra Shizaki is no longer regarded as a hero. Another thing keep the southern district clear of students. After the morning service, if they're not gone by the time the fighting starts it's on them. Yes, I understand we'll have ectoplasm clones in proximity ready to save students if they are caught in the crossfire. With that over Izuku grabbed a candle that was on a small couch side table before he spoke, let's go. Giving his goodbye to Mei Ibarra and Izuku left the apartment heading back to the southern district. The roads were quiet, the whole city was mourning. 
the only lights were that of the street lamps. It hadn't taken long before they both arrived at the southern district and seeing it firsthand Ibarra put her hands together praying. She felt horrible for the victims. A true saint through and through. Grabbing Ibarra Izuku jumped down to the street level walking with Ibarra on his right as he got closer to the news crew, hearing the student being interviewed. H heroes if you're watching. Get out of our city dot 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 you caused this. Adjusting his mask Lucifer spoke his voice amplified booming throughout the area yes they did. Walking forward Izuku was shrouded in darkness as Ibarra followed him and under the streetlights. Her radiance grew as they got closer the light seemingly following her as she walked. Passing the news crew Izuku and Ibarra went to an open spot within the area of mourners before kneeling on the ground. Taking his candle Lucifer leaned it down so the flame of another lit his as he set it down. Ibarra next to him spoke out a prayer. All eyes were on him and he could tell so he spoke. I never wanted for any of this to happen to my people. Standing up Lucifer looked at Ibarra nodding his head as she went around offering prayers to those who were mourning. The strife the heroes have put you all under is nothing short of absolute injustice. Today I too mourn for this city, for those who lost their loved ones, for those I wasn't fast enough to save. I'm not asking for forgiveness for what I have done, but I do ask you all to view the heroes for what they are. I gave them a chance to leave our city alone. They created me. They made this disaster happen. I offer you all guidance and safety in this time of great catastrophe. If you so wish it all cleanse this city from the heroes. Ending his speech there was only silence before a few voices screamed out. Get rid of the heroes. Avenge my family. Bring us justice. More and more cheers rang out all of them claiming they wanted justice and their families to finally rest. The people looked at Ibarra who assured Lucifer's motives and they started to look at her as an angel of Lucifer, another savior. Mamoy wouldn't let this opportunity slip grabbing the microphone off the ground she and her cameraman ran to Lucifer who was getting surrounded by hopeful citizens. Shoving the microphone up to Lucifer's face Mamoy spoke, Lucifer, is there anything you want to say to the heroes? Yes, heroes I give your remaining members a choice give Katsuki Bakugu otherwise known as Ground Zero to us and leave this city and its people or by the end of the week, you will cease to exist. Your avidity the offer I have given you has closed yet I hope you see the sense in ending this pointless conflict. Pointing at the camera Lucifer's voice was low. Your time to choose has begun now. The heroes just stared at the screen. Lucifer had turned everyone against him. Ibarra was with him working with him. Uraraka put her head down Izuku's offer to join him and be with him had been closed even though it was in the context of the game she could help but feel a bit of heartbreak that even he wouldn't wait for her. Kendo, however, had no such reservations though one of her classmates turning on them had her shaken to the core she was sure Ibarra was doing it to lower Lucifer's guard there wasn't any way she would actually join. Everyone who can move get ready. We're going after Lucifer. If we capture him here the game will be over. Yelling Kendo watched as a little less than half of the heroes got up. Uraraka namely staying behind with Mina and Hagakure. With the numbers they have, it was going to be hard. Gathering their gear they equipped everything they could. It was possible this was the final battle but they didn't know how wrong they were. Rushing out of the hero HQ Kendo nodded to her team as they rushed to the southern district. Ibarra you better be ready we're gonna need your help. Holding out faith Kendo saw her team ready for a fight though some of them had clear nervousness in the body movement but she couldn't blame them. Running she saw the flames of the candles that littered the area along with crowds of people surrounding two figures. Lucifer and his angel, coveting the people before them. Kamakiri who had spotted them yelled out drawing attention to themselves, Lucifer. Lucifer and Vine turned to see the heroes rushing towards them. Looking at the crowds of people around him Lucifer amplified his voice, leave us. No harm will come to you, we will stop the heroes here. Do not put yourself in harm's way. Walking through the crowd Lucifer and Ibarra ushered people out of the area Ibarra offering prayers for their safety. Heroes, have you come to give up? You not only interrupt the mourning of those lost but you force them out of their loved one's remembrance the sins you have all committed bring nothing but darkness to the people. I give you the chance to cleanse yourselves. Lucifer, it's over give up. Vine capture Lucifer. Kendo enlarging her hands got her quirk ready the others following her example while they all looked at Ibarra. I will not. God has sent Lucifer to test my faith, to allow me the chance to cleanse you of your sins. Join me Kendo. Your sins can be forgiven however those such as Katsuki Bakugu and Kosai Tsuburaba cannot be forgiven. If you don't willingly wash yourselves of sin both Lucifer, and I will have to do so for you. The heroes were stunned Ibarra outright refused to turn on Lucifer instead she started lecturing them about their sins. Sure she has tried to change them and has called them sinners before but this was taking it to another level. Vine think about what you're doing. If you won't capture Lucifer that makes you a villain just like him, can't you see he's using you? Yelling Tetsu Tetsu hardened his body into steel, he couldn't believe what was happening. No, Lucifer is not, 
you will not question my faith while you cooperate with Kosai or Bakugu. Ibarra manipulating her vines had them separate looming over her like a pack of snakes ready to strike while Lucifer had OFA active. Bakugu's pride and wrath blinded him. He killed innocents in vain. Kosai gave in to his lust his lecturing eyes gazing at us every moment. You all share sins. Monoma's prideful ignorance is infuriating. Uraraka's greed. Gyro your envy, Shinso's sloth. You each commit heinous sins yet you refuse to accept them when given an offer to be reborn. Lucifer isn't a villain nor am I. Ibarra's barbed words attacked everybody. And to some extent they were true they had to admit it but siding with Lucifer just because of her beliefs it was insane. Mrs. Ibarra if you continue this we will be forced to fight. Shishida as respectfully as he could try one final time to convince Ibarra but in response that only got more vines to grow and Lucifer's full cowl to grow brighter as he ripped the gauze on his head off. Raising his right hand Lucifer stared at the hero team before he wagged his finger in a mocking manner his inner thoughts bleeding in his head. With that, the fight officially began as Ibarra wasted no time using her vines to dig underneath the ground trying to strike the heroes down and capture them. Everyone separate and take Lucifer out first. Kendo barked out orders as she rushed Ibarra her hands enlarged. Listening several of the Class 1 and 1B members who had come charged after Lucifer who had yet to take up a defensive stance. Striking first Ida used recipro burst aiming at knocking his friend out in one strike, Midoriya. Getting to the side of Lucifer Ida raised his leg pushing even more as his leg became faster. Lucifer still hadn't made a move yet so Ida thought he had caught his friend off guard but that was anything but the case. Before his leg could strike its marks a hand gripped hard onto it stopping its motion while his body twisted forcing him to fall face first into the ground. You're too slow. Looking over his shoulder Ida saw Lucifer's cold eyes bore straight through him, H. How. Lucifer didn't answer instead he looked forward at the rushing class members of 1 and 1B. But instead of taking a stance he simply winded up and using his enhanced strength threw Ida head first into the largest group of them as he rushed from behind. His first targets were the long-ranged fighters starting with Gyro. His quirk ramped up to 30% Lucifer's speed couldn't be stopped as he jumped over the dogpiled heroes. Though most of her gear was destroyed Gyro still had options of fighting so plugging her ear jacks into her boots she pushed her heartbeat trying to stop Lucifer's advance. Being hit by the sonic blast Lucifer's ears started banging like a drum though they haven't ruptured thanks to the earpieces he had toning the noise down, though it did sting. However it only slowed him down as pushing through the constant sound waves he finally reached Gyro, headbutting the girl in the nose. Lucifer kneeled forcing Gyro ear jacks out of her boots. Though she instead plugged one of them into his stomach sending wave after wave of sound causing Lucifer to have some blood drip out of his mouth the damage to his organs growing. With the other ear jack in his possession. However, he pulled on it before taking his other hand clapping his hands together with OFA infused. It was Gyro's time to fall to the ground her other ear jack retreating as the purple-haired girl laid on the ground her head ring as her right ear jack went deaf her ear bleeding from the sounds echoing from his clap. Standing up Lucifer pulled out his pistol aiming it at the girl. Before he could pull the trigger however sen his arms drill like due to his quirk struck at Lucifer forcing the villain to dodge, shooting bullets trying to take the hero out but they were stopped by Tetsu Tetsu covering him. They're working together quite well. Tetsu Tetsu looking behind him nodded his head as he rushed forward sen covered by him while Shota tagged along. Taking every bullet shot Tetsu Tetsu punched at Lucifer as a distraction as sen took over trying to hit Lucifer, while Shota used his quirk trying to double the force of sen's attack. Despite their plan, Lucifer didn't bat an eye instead he dodged both Sen and Tetsu Tetsu before hounding on Shota. Grabbing the small boy by his head Lucifer rolled on the ground shoving the barrel of his pistol into the hero's mouth before pulling the trigger forcing Shota to try and spit the fake blood out. Using his technically dead body Lucifer used Shota as a shield as Ajiro struck with his tail keeping it from hitting him. Letting go of the boy Lucifer twisted his body kicking Ajiro in the side of his body sending the tailed boy into a building and through a wall. Looking Lucifer's attention turned to Ibarra. Despite the number of students trying to take her down, Ibarra remained calm as she used her vines. Ibarra. Stop this. Attacking Kamakiri yelled at Ibarra who was forced to defend herself from Kamakiri who using his quirk tried to slice through her vines blades popping out of his body as he tried to get through the defensive wall she had placed. Repent for your sins. Striking with her vines Ibarra stopped Kendo who had come from the side trying to punch her. Though it didn't end there as she had to put up a wall of vines Bondo spewing glue it hardening the vines together forcing Ibarra to detach them from her head. Growing more she looked at Ayama who with his navel laser was trying to strike a hole into the large vine wall. Narrowing her eyes Ibarra used her vines burrowing them underneath Ayama before they burst through the ground in her special move crucifixion the same as she did to Kaminari. 
but unlike last time she tightened the grip on the vines them crush Ayama's armor and his belt leaving Barley any option for the French boy to attack. Though doing so she was distracted by this move allowing Siro to wrap her up in a large roll of tape. Struggling to escape Ibarra's vines were still in her control as they burst to wrap her in a cocoon the thorns on her vines growing sharper as on the inside they cut through the tape freeing her. The heroes on the outside were checking up on Ayama, Bondo, Kamakiri, and Shishida kept an eye on the large cocoon. Ayama are you okay? Siro taking off his classmate's broken armor looked at the boy who looked a little worse for wear like life was squeezed out of him. Mu that wasn't very magnifique. Even with his French way of speaking Siro understood perfectly. It looked really painful and for Ibarra to break the armor so effortlessly it seems Ibarra's restrictions have faded. Is this what spending just a short time with Midoriya can do? Trying to pick up Ayama Siro had to be helped by Kendo who spoke. Siro I'm going to need you to assist the team taking on Lucifer. Shota is already eliminated. Go. Enlarging her hands Kendo took over while Siro nodded his head going over to the group fighting Lucifer. Kendo. Turning Kendo saw the cocoon of vines growing steadily the sharp points of the thorns clear for everyone to see even in the darkness of night. The thorns glinted in the lights of the lampposts. Get away. Yelling it was too late as the vines exploded out grabbing at everything while Ibarra walked out her vines chasing down anybody near while Kamakiri got away the same couldn't have been said for Bondo. And Shishida as vines wrapped around them. Thorns digging into their skin and while it wasn't so bad for Shishida thanks to him using his beast form the thorns still caused both heroes to bleed. The vines twisting caused Bondo to try and use his quirk to stop them but the damage was done the pain was too much every part of his body was being pierced by thorns and he felt his blood drip. Gluing a few of the vines Bondo passed out from the pain. Kajiro Bondo is out. Ignoring her teacher's voice Ibarra detached the vines holding Bondo. She could keep fighting for long but just as she was ready to attack again Lucifer was sent past her getting hit into a wall. Rushing over Ibarra saw Shoto, Yui, Kendo, Siro, Ajiro, Kamakiri, Ida, and Pony walking towards them. Lucifer smiled under his mask he couldn't have asked for a better person to have been placed in his care. Ibarra was not only strong with her quirk but she was easy to manipulate especially with her belief. Seeing as she could handle herself Lucifer turned back to the opponents in front of him. Checking the chamber of his hardballer he saw he had expended his ammo shooting at Tetsu Tetsu so holstering it he pulled out his backup pistol. Scanning the field Lucifer had yet to see Todoroki make a move along with Kodai and Pony they had been silent not attacking. Watching he saw Tetsu Tetsu, Sen, and Ajiro finally recover the taking stances as they stared him down. Come on fight, or are you afraid? Lucifer give up this will be our last warning. Stepping forward Todoroki's sides flared trying for intimidation. Give up. Todoroki you of all people know that isn't possible, though I can't blame you. After your mother burned you who wouldn't want to give up I know I did when my mother took a knife to my skin. Fortunately for you your mom is now spending time in a mental hospital. Mentioning Todoroki's mother and her current position Todoroki's face ran with anger yet he didn't make a move. Struck a nerve didn't die. It was then they attacked Tetsu Tetsu again attacked first though unlike last time Sen didn't follow up but Ajiro did. Rushing Tetsu Tetsu had his body hardened as he went in. Getting ready Lucifer waited before Tetsu Tetsu suddenly crouched Ajiro using him as a springboard kicked at Lucifer who dodged his foot but not his tail which stuck him in the stomach before it started wrapping around his body. Taking advantage Tetsu Tetsu punched Lucifer in the stomach and head trying everything to knock out the villain. Taking the hits Lucifer was grateful he took those painkillers. Or this would feel so much worse especially when he felt his ribs creak. The only reason they hadn't broken was because of May's woven armor in his suit. God I love her. Smiling under his mask he ignored the blood slowly spilling out his mouth the damage Gyro did being improved upon with Tetsu Testu's strikes. His wound from earlier opened up again as blood flowed down his head. Though he had enough pushing OFA to 15% Lucifer waited before he grabbed onto a part of Ajiro's tail that was just underneath Tetsu Tetsu's strikes. Taking a few more strikes Lucifer suddenly pushed Ajiro's tail up with his strength as Tetsu Tetsu struck hard on the section causing Ajiro to yell in pain as his tail loosened and taking advantage. Lucifer freed himself using Ajiro's tail to swing the student like a bat swatting Tetsu Tetsu away before he stepped on his back and with the hand holding his pistol Lucifer struck the middle of Ajiro's tail breaking the large and dense bone as tail didn't follow each other's movements one part going at an odd angle. F-U-U-U-C-K Cursing out in pain Ajiro's eyes had tears forming, as Lucifer dropped his tail to the floor. Leaning his head back he narrowly dodged an attack from Sen. Reacting Lucifer used the butt of the handle on his pistol to hit Sen in the throat causing the drill-like limbs to stop spinning as he struggled to breathe. Though Lucifer didn't stop as he legs swept Sen firing a bullet into the hero's chest where his heart was. 
Turning his pistol Lucifer was ready to fire when a razor-sharp horn pierced into the back of his shoulders them carrying him into the floor dragging him across the concrete. Digging his left hand into the ground Lucifer stopped the acceleration and the damage the floor was causing. Izuku. I'm fine. May's voice was the last thing he need to hear right now he knew she was watching but now wasn't the time. Despite May's armor in his suit, the horn still penetrated as Izuku could feel his clothes getting damp with blood. Standing up Lucifer pulled the horn in his right shoulder out before switching pistol hands digging the other horn out as well. Rolling his shoulders Lucifer turned to the other heroes. Todoroki walked forward looking at Lucifer sympathetically. Shaking his head Lucifer felt his vision go blurred for a second before the pain brought him back. I have to end this, my PR stunt is already done I just have to clear a few out. Though now I have to adjust they think this will put me out of commission don't they? Well then I'm counting on it don't disappoint me. Grinning Lucifer had to adjust though he's taking some damage he's been through worse though the heroes don't know this. Taking a position Lucifer was ready to charge. Doing so he raised his gun but just as he pulled the trigger a large roll of tape coiled around his right arm pulling down making Lucifer miss his shot. Trying to pull Syrah with his strength but as he was doing so his feet started freezing. Looking down he saw his legs slowly being crawled up with ice. Raising his left fist he was going to break Todoroki's ice Yui caught his attention. Like how Yuraraka usual did she put her fingertips together a glow resonating before some large struck Lucifer sending him away. As he was hit he managed to catch a glimpse of Tetsu Tetsu holding an enlarged street lamp. Hitting a wall Lucifer's head pounded as he felt Ibarra shaking him. Lucifer. Looking up he saw Ibarra concerned her vines not looking as good as they can. Not only that but the heroes recovered Ajiro although his tail was broken was ready in a fighting position. Realizing the type of situation they were in Lucifer rose up from the wall though some parts of his body ate, and his backup pistol was on the ground near the heroes so it wasn't an option. Ibarra leave. With his hands free, he pushed Ibarra who tried to refuse but he looked at her telling her sternly. Listening Ibarra turned to retreat but before any of the heroes could run after her. Lucifer spoke. Didn't think I would have to use this so soon but hey why not? Confusing the heroes Lucifer put his hands to his side before he activated Black Whip the hero's eyes going wide at this new quirk. With the help of May's gloves Black Whip flowed through his fingers making five ropes of Black Whip on each hand. Let's begin. Pushing OFA to 30% Lucifer attacked using Black Whip to wrap around Pony's horns. Yanking her to the side with his strength he forced the girl's horns to dig into the ground causing the girl to get stuck. With that Lucifer let loose wrapping Black Whip around each member of the hero team's limbs launching them into the ground. Tetsu Tetsu still in his steel form recovered rushing Lucifer despite his new quirk. Lucifer meeting the hero in the middle punched Tetsu Tetsu in the stomach but unlike what Tetsu Tetsu expected to happen he felt the metal cave in. Shit I used my quirk too much. Spitting out blood and saliva Tetsu Tetsu fell to the ground his quirk fading. Lucifer seeing this dug into his suit pulling out his butterfly knife before stabbing where Tetsu Tetsu's spine was. Getting a confirmation he was out Lucifer was struck as Todoroki had used his free hand sending a column of fire. With the resistance of his suit Lucifer didn't mind the heat, and instead having Black Whip still on Todoroki he figured he should get rid of him for now. So manipulating Black Whip he launched Todoroki out of the area. Though that did little as Anjiro using his martial arts went face to face with Lucifer, but Lucifer had expected this, and using a finger of Black Whip he managed to throw Anjiro's stance off balance forcing the punches and kicks he threw to miss. Lucifer didn't let this go. Raising his leg up he went for an axe kick aiming for Ajiro's shoulder. And seeing this Ajiro acted accordingly waiting to catch the villain's leg but he didn't expect Lucifer to suddenly switch as the villain twisting his hips slightly instead hooked his leg around Ajiro's neck before he flipped taking Ajiro down. Taking his knife Lucifer slid Ajiro's neck. Zero seeing an open opportunity shot tape out of his elbows trying to wrap Lucifer. But instead Lucifer kicked Ajiro into his place rolling away as Kendo punched the ground trying to hit him. Detaching the tape Ciro watched as Lucifer reached his gun kicking Kendo's knee in before he planted his foot in her face. The barrel of the gun then pointed to where Ciro was standing and reacting he got out the way but he didn't hear or feel anything. Looking he saw Lucifer finally pull the trigger where Ayama was resting on the side of the building Ciro forgetting he was there. Ayama. Ignoring Ciro Lucifer rolled over Kendo elbowing the girl in the head sending her face first into the ground. Taking his pistol he aimed, looking for Pony who had freed herself. Launching her horns continuously Pony tried to get an attack in like she did earlier, but Lucifer kept dodging. Nervous Pony kept launching attacks, but Lucifer was closing the distance so using her limited close-range combat she sent four more horns planning on distracting from the front, while the horns attacked from the back. Getting close Pony desperately tried to punch and kick Lucifer who was countering her with ease as if this were a game. 
Pony looking past Lucifer saw her horns turning. Now, giving a command her horn started flying faster towards Lucifer's back but what happened next surprised her. Lucifer punching her in the stomach put his shoulder to Pony's before vaulting over her. Pony was now in the path of her horns and before she could get them to stop one of the horns pierced her shoulder while the other two grazed her cutting her costume and a bit of her skin. Being Pony in the back Lucifer put his gun to the back of her head pulling the trigger. Ajiro, Aoyama, Pony, Sen, Tetsu Tetsu, Shota, Bondo, Kosai. That enough for today. Kicking Pony down Lucifer saw his chance to escape, but of course, Kamakiri had to interrupt. Lucifer ill beat your ass. Yelling Kamakiri reminded Lucifer of someone else as blades popped out of the boy's body. Yui and Ida also arrived already to fight but Lucifer had no time for that as the pain of the wounds he suffered were slowly catching up and with Todoroki already on his way. He couldn't stay. Sorry, but I can't continue this any longer although you have my condolences. Activating their quirks the trio wasn't going to allow Lucifer to escape but he wasn't going to be stopped. Using Black Whip he gathered the bodies of those he had already taken out before throwing them at the trio. Distracted as they were tackled by the bodies of their friends the trio had to deactivate their quirks as to not hurt them but in doing so they allowed Lucifer his chance. Jumping to the nearest rooftop Lucifer ran as fast as he could to the western district. If anyone was following him he could lose them there before he made his way to Mei. Izuku, you need to get back to the apartment. I am fine. Mei's concerned voice called out to him in his earpiece. But vehemently he denied her order. No you're not you're bleeding heavily and your bones are under large amounts of stress there are on the borderline of breaking. May I can't lead them back to the apartment. They aren't following you I'm checking everything on the cameras even if they want to they have to deal with the heroes that are dead or injured. Ibarra is here as well. Come back. Speaking May tried to reason with Lucifer as the villain stopped on a roof leaning on a power transformer. All right you'll go to the apartment just stop yelling in my ear. Getting back up Lucifer stumbled before he took off. If he wasn't being followed then he shouldn't have a problem getting to the apartment. Glad Ibarra could get out of there she proved very useful tonight. Though I shouldn't have let them hit me that much. Time skip. Currently, Izuku was laying down in his bed within the apartment. His body and head bandaged while Mei slept on his chest. Looking up at the ceiling he felt Mei snuggle up closer to him as he thought of the events that led to this. When he first got into the apartment Mei and Ibarra had to help him get in the room and after Mei stripped Izuku's upper body she got to bandaging him while he took painkillers to stop the pain from getting worse. After a round of disinfecting and some tears from Mei he had finally been bandaged. After that it was rapid. Ibarra was told to sleep on the couch while Mei made sure Izuku was okay during the night. After that Mei snuggled up to Izuku claiming she wouldn't go anywhere and had him make a promise. I guess I'm taking most of tomorrow off. Closing his eyes Izuku fell asleep him wrapping his arm around Mei pulling his girlfriend closer, yet not knowing he allowed another nightmare to enter his mind. With that I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you next time bye bye.